you know, something stinks, and I suspect you smell it too. Over the weekend, I try to unplug just a little, but it's hard. There are so many signs that this world of ours is on its final countdown, and none could be more telling than the way things are escalating with China and coming to head. You see, among other things, China wants respect. They are the world's Walmart, yet their nation is in poverty, their people are hungry, and their international clout, I would argue, is still second rate. But right now, the thing they want the most is Taiwan, and they won't rest until they have it. With the world focused on Ukraine and our own military stockpiles depleted, they're incapable of fully defending our island nation ally. Now is the opportune time for China to make the move. It's been escalating in recent years across every dimension. Just take a look at the news. There's China taunting and testing Taiwan with its warplanes by intruding on the island's air defense identification zone. Now, every nation has one of these. It's called an ADIZ, Air Defense Identification Zone. This is a publicly declared area next to a state's national airspace, and it's where approaching foreign aircraft have to identify themselves and they have to identify their intentions. And if it's hostile or unknown, the military of the concerned nation has time to take defensive measures if needed. And since late 2020, China has been sending more jets, more drones, more other aircraft than ever before. And in fact, in 2022, China sent 1,727 planes into China's area. This was up from 960 in 2021. That's almost double. And 380 in 2020. And it hasn't stopped. Just in April, one of the largest scale incursions happened with 54 Chinese warplanes, bombers, fighters, entering Taiwan's identification zone. But that's just the beginning. Check it out. Over the weekend, the USS Chung Hoon, this is actually a U.S. Navy destroyer. It's not Chinese. It's U.S. It's based out of Pearl Harbor, and the ship was performing a routine south-to-north Taiwan straight transit. And a, and a Chinese-guided missile destroyer overtook the Chung Hoon on their port side and crossed their bow at 150 yards. Now think about it, 150 yards. That is a high school football field and a half's distance from each other. Two destroyers traveling very fast on a course for collision. And basically, these guys are giving each other the finger on the high seas. If they had collided, according to U.S. officials, it would be the fault of the Chinese because they weren't respecting the rules of the road. As if that matters. Come on, rules of the road. Just days prior to this brush, the commander of the U.S. military in the Pacific, Admiral John Ocalino, he warned Chinese Chairman Xi Jinping himself that an invasion of Taiwan would be costly to China in terms of what he said, blood and treasure. This was during a keynote address for the National Committee on United States-China Relations. And during the Q&A, the committee president asked Aquilino to discuss lessons from the Ukraine war for Taiwan and whether it had changed the U.S. military strategy for the risk of the, of the conflict in the strait. And Aquilino said, sure. There are many lessons that can be learned from Russia's illegal and illegitimate, unprovoked, unprovoked attack on Ukraine. The Admiral argued that the world was woken up by the invasion. The people in Taiwan certainly have a new view now. Uh, he went on to say that it should be concerning that the invasion of Ukraine demonstrates that any single leader from an authoritarian nation can take such aggressive actions without the consideration of others. Shame on you, Putin. Shame on you, Xi for your lack of consideration for others. So check it out. What does she think? Well, he told his generals to be prepared to invade Taiwan. Yep, prepare to invade by 2027. That is, should he choose the desire to execute by force this annexation of Taiwan. And this past Tuesday, at a meeting of the party's National Security Commission, she called on his top national security officials to think about worst case scenarios and prepare for stormy seas. He said the complexity and difficulty of the national security issues they now face, we now face, he said, have increased significantly. So there you go. Prepare for perilous, stormy seas. He said China must also speed up the modernization of its national security system and its capabilities with a focus on making them more effective in what he called actual combat and practical use. I don't think this guy is bluffing, folks. So what would an invasion of Taiwan by China mean? Well, according to our side, U.S. Secretary, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, it would be devastating. As he put it recently during a speech last week in Singapore, it's a, it's a major conference 
talking about security of the region. He said the whole world has a stake in maintaining peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait, the whole world. The security of commercial shipping lanes and global supply chains depend on it. And so does freedom of navigation worldwide. Well, no kidding. Now, I've shared my theory before for why China wants Taiwan. And it's not because the nations share similar cultural roots and they want to celebrate Chinese New Year together. It's not. It's because of the semiconductor chips that Taiwan makes. Over 65% of the world's supply comes from Taiwan. And those chips in our world literally keep things running. Without those chips, the world stops. China knows this, and that's why they want them. By the way, it was at the same meeting last week that the world's spy chiefs from two dozen of the world's major intelligence agencies got together to talk. A secret meeting. What about? We'll never, we'll never know, of course. We won't. But we do know that there is this gentlemanly, unspoken, unwritten code among intelligence services that they can get together and talk when more formal and open diplomacy is harder or maybe failing. And that's probably what's happening here. Diplomacy is failing. So the spy chiefs get together and they chit-chat. And you know things are heating up when you have the defense ministers of Japan and China doing a combo check on Saturday to ensure the reliability of their military hotline. Literally, this was done to prevent clashes amid rising tensions in the East China Sea that, that are happening on a daily basis now. So Japan's defense minister, Hamada, met with his Chinese counterpart, Li Shangfu. They met on the sidelines and they discussed their country's security concerns. Now, I would have thought a hotline existed for some time. So I was surprised to hear that it began operation only last month. Wow, last month. That tells me things are a lot more tense than we think or that anyone's letting on to. Maybe this is why we're hearing the rumor mill out there. And, and, and you hear it too. It's churning that the government, our government, is telling institutions like hospitals, jails, prisons, that they should probably have enough food on hand to get through a 10-day disruption of supply chains. 10 days is putting it light. Now, I've never worked for a large institution before with a, a captive population. So I imagine most respectable institutions like hospitals and prisons probably already have a few weeks on hand, or at least I think they would. It's not like they can just order DoorDash or takeout for thousands of people at a time. But why are we hearing the extra warnings now? Let's not be naive. Common sense tells us that someone knows or someone suspects a supply chain disruption is looming. Maybe it's because of China. Maybe it's because of Russia. Maybe it's our own grid going down. Maybe it's something else. Who knows? It doesn't matter. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not. I'm just saying, be prepared, please, in whatever way you can, while you can. I'm lucky. I have a whole warehouse full of survival food downstairs, and I've got the key to the place. But unless you're planning a trip to Reno to meet me at the door, you need to get ready. I don't care if it's our stuff or not. Something is better than nothing. Sure, we don't cut corners around here, and the food we make is loaded up with the nutrition you need to survive and actually thrive for an extended period of time. We're really committed to this. Check it out. Do the right thing. Get some extra food. Put away some water. Get your medicine together. Have your barters in place. Your house will keep you safe for a while, but then you might have to venture out for supplies. Are you going to be ready? Will that be in a couple days, a week, a month? I don't know. Please do what you need to. Get prepared today. The government, our government, will not save you. And when things collapse, you're on your own. I think we're getting very close. The signs are everywhere. You see them. I see them. The world sees them. What do you think? Are we there? Please share your comments below. Make sure you subscribe. Turn your notification bell on and hit that like button. Until next time, folks. Be ready, be strong, be alert, and keep on prepping.